I just caught my, male 29, fiancé, female 31, in bed with my father, male 54. This is by far the most strange experience I've ever had. This occurred around two days ago, and I still feel as if I'm in a nightmare. I apologize in advance for the length, I hadn't told anybody about it, and all I wanted was an outlet. So my fiancé and I have been dating for six years, and I proposed to her in January of last year. We were going to marry in June, but then the epidemic struck. Although I didn't mind having a modest private wedding, she insisted on waiting since she wanted the wedding of her dreams. We had intended to marry later this year, but I think those plans have come to a stop. She began behaving strangely around four months ago. She grew distant, was less loving than normal, and started to behave suspiciously, such as arriving home late at night, being protective of her phone, and lying about her whereabouts. I didn't suspect her of cheating and instead chalked it up to cold feet. I asked her if she was having second thoughts about marrying me and she told me that she was simply overworked. This made sense to me since she had just received a promotion. She also became quite close to my father about the same period. Of course I didn't think anything of it. Who would be worried about his father and fiancé forming a close relationship? My father and mother are divorced as a result of his adultery. My father is very rich and a narcissist. This became clearer to me now than it had been before. My wife and I were meant to spend Christmas with my mother's side of the family, as well as my brother and sister. She made up an excuse about wanting to spend that time with some of her relatives and needing to get some work done anyhow. She demanded that I travel on my own and that we spend New Year's Eve together. I accepted since I hadn't seen my mother in a long time. Coincidentally, my father was leaving town around the same time. I only learned this when contemplating and decided that they probably spent that time together. My siblings and I spent Christmas and New Year's with one of our parents and the other with the other. Every year, we switched between the two. My mom and dad couldn't bear the sight of one other, as you can probably tell from the fact that we'd never spent such holidays together. Neither side of the family gets along, and it's been difficult to strike a balance and not take sides. As I previously said, I had no reason to suspect her of cheating on me until she began getting calls from a number kept under her best friend's name. Karen, too, was stored as a backup, fake name. This made little sense to me since she was getting these calls when we were out to dinner with Karen and her husband. Karen was right in front of me, and she wasn't on her phone. When I glanced at the phone, then at my wife, she gave me the most oops I messed up face I've ever seen. I didn't say anything while we were there, but I did question her about it on the way home. Her justification was that it was another Karen from work. I requested to view her phone, but she refused. She complained that I'd be violating her privacy and that she didn't like being accused of something so heinous. I mentioned how she'd been behaving suspiciously lately and how her refusal to show me her phone was only pointing to her doing something dirty. She maintained she wasn't and that the talks and the text messages were private. I mistakenly let it go after much back and forth. Fast forward to the present and her conduct hasn't changed much. It just became worse as she continued to deny anything was going on. I was supposed to go on a business trip for a week on Monday. Fortunately, my flight was canceled owing to snowstorms and my vacation was postponed. When I went home, I saw my father's vehicle parked outside. It's my father. He's surely only passing through, right? When I get inside, I don't see him or his fiance. I yell out, where are they? And I hear, rushing upstairs in my bedroom. My fiancé is agitated as I go towards my bedroom, begging that I wait for her below. When I ask her where my father is, she claims she has no idea. However, his automobile is parked outside. He has to be here. When I go to the bedroom door, it's locked. When I ask her to open it, she replies she's getting ready. The concept of them together hadn't even occurred to me throughout this whole period. When I beg her to open the door, she tells I should wait below. I could now be her multiple footsteps from inside, and that's when it occurred to me what was going on. In a hurry, I kicked the door down, and I wish I hadn't seen what I did. My father was in my room, fumbling to put his trousers on while my fiancé wasn't just wearing her panties. I was utterly taken by surprise. What I was seeing astounded me. My fiancé burst out laughing and yelled something along the lines of it's not what it appears to be. I can explain. The cliché nonsense. I was looking at my father the whole time, watching him get ready. At one point, I wondered whether I shouldn't simply beat the heck out of him right then and there. But I couldn't do it. I didn't have the stamina. I was completely defeated. 
I just got back into my vehicle with the bag I intended to take on my work trip and drove away. My fiancé attempted to stop me and even attempted to jump into my vehicle as I drove away. I got into a motel and have been staying here ever since. Calls and messages from both of them, as well as other relatives and friends, have deluged me. I haven't talked to anybody, and I haven't returned any of their phone calls. This hurts a lot. I'm not sure what I'm expected to do. Why would they do such a thing to me? Why would he choose my fiancé out of all people? I've spent the last two days weeping and drinking, and I have no idea what I'm meant to do. Has anybody else gone through anything similar, and if so, how did you find the fortitude to keep going? I could go on and on, but that would be a rant. How am I expected to deal with such betrayal? I need assistance. Anything? Story 2. I hate myself for posting this. Just need to get it off my chest. I come from one of the Nordic nations. I've had a difficult six months and honestly don't know how to deal with it constructively. My new family's breadwinner is now me. I've taken on more duties at work and been involved in politics in my city. Meanwhile, I'm in charge of a 37,000 euro project for the EU Commission. I'm now fighting to stay up. My family fully supports me. Nevertheless, the majority of my family has died away. I lost my mother when I was 23 years old, married my first wife two months later, separated after three months, and divorced the following year when my wife cheated on me. I was unmarried for the following eight years while finishing my degree. When I returned from studying abroad for a year, I relocated to a new city to start again. I was unhappy and work was frantic and not what I had expected. I acquired a drinking problem as a result of stress and attempted to get treatment. After 13 hours in the ER, I was informed that it was all in my head until I felt suicidal. They felt I could be stressed since I indicated I wasn't suicidal, so they let me go. My supervisor claimed he'd assist me, but two years later, he delayed a promotion based on that chat. Three years have passed, I'm doing well at work, and I've been married to my present wife for two years. Finally, I was in the right frame of mind to meet someone. We date for nearly a year before being engaged, and I couldn't be happier, despite the fact that everything occurred so rapidly. We marry, and my father is overjoyed, as are my brother and nephew. Meanwhile, my father is having problems with his prostate, which has been diagnosed as malignant. My father does not always give me the complete truth, so I contact my adored elder brother. He has the same concerns that I do. It turns out that my brother and I should brace ourselves for the worse. My father is 78 years old, and this disease might be the last of him. We begin talking about making plans. Two weeks later, my son is born. My father's side of the family pays us a visit. My brother is holding my newborn kid, who is seated next to my nephew, and we are both giggling. Three weeks later, at 20 minutes past midnight, I get a phone call from my father. I'm sitting with my three-week-old baby, nursing him, when my father informs me that my brother has died. He had a heart attack on his way home from work. The ambulance arrived within two minutes, but the surgeons were unable to resuscitate him. My world has been shattered. I'm at a loss on what to do. I take three days off from work, but then I feel the walls closing in on me. I have much too many responsibilities. My greatest inspiration as a parent dies three weeks after my son is born at the age of 48. Aside from that, I need, want, and will care for my 17-year-old nephew and my father. I'm still a mess four months later. Every day, I chat to my nephew who lives out of state, as well as my father, and I work additional hours at my job to maintain our quality of life. I'm 35 years old, but I've never met my grandparents on my father's side, my grandfather on my mother's side, and my grandma, who was 85 years old when I was born. From my original family, I just have my father and a nephew remaining. I'm completely lost. I'll get through it, but I think I just needed to put it down on paper. I have a great wife who adores me, and my kid is the most amazing human being I have ever met. I simply want a shot right now, but they need me and I need them. I absolutely detest being born with elderly parents. I only have my father left at the age of 34, and I want he could live forever. I miss my mother and brother. God alone knows how much time I have left. Thank you for taking the time to read this.